doggone technology doggone technology all right guys i'll wait for you to come back i'm sorry no worries yeah technology it shut the video down i may have accidentally pushed finish so now i'll wait for people to come back <laughs> That's okay. You know what? As long as the words are not there, I should probably hide. It's a lot easier even for me to see. Come on back, guys. So much for me to learn. Let's see. You know what? While you guys are coming back, I think I'm going to touch these buttons. Write a comment. Come on back. Come on. Nope. You know what? Yeah. I didn't realize I could comment. That's kind of cool. Let's see. What else? Um, mm, invite friends. <laughs> hey, honey, how are you? Man, I, I'm st uh, struggling. Not sure to do that. Sorry about that, guys. I think when I was adjusting the video, I hit, um, <laughs> I hit finish, which clearly I wasn't. Uh, again, you're giving me grace because today is all of day four. I promise I'm going to do this video again, and instead of being discouraged, because this is the no complaining zone, instead of being encouraged, uh, discouraged, I should say, I think what I'm going to do next time is I am going to maybe try to see if I can create an easel, and I'm going to paint the wall a dark color so that all of the holes and things are going to be easier to see. So I think that sh that's going to help. So come on back. Come on back. Sorry, guys. I, I I probably accidentally hit finished and so it cut the video off, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to give everybody just a couple of more seconds to come on in. And uh, so, hey, how are you guys spending your quarantine days? That's what I want to know. What are you, what are you working on? Is anybody, has anybody taken on any house projects since you uh, have been quarantining? You know what? I went to Lowell's to pick up some wood so I could do this project today. And the gal at Lowell said that uh, they're packed. They said that their paint department is swamped because people are painting their houses. So I say, good for you. All right, so I'll just let people catch this back on the replay. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, so we're talking about what happens when you have a hole. And I'm trying to teach you not just holes, but scratches and all that. I'm trying to teach you how to properly patch a hole in your drywall and to uh, have that properly repaired. So we talked about... Uh, having a mud, having a mud pan. I said I don't have a whole lot of mud, so just about that much. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my two fingers here. And what's happening is I'm ev evenly distributing every single time. So even if I just, can you, you guys can see that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hide. I'm going to hide. Sorry about that, guys. I accidentally, I think I accidentally hit the finish button. All right. So here now you can see, I actually had to hide who's on and who's comments because I, I wanted to be able to show you guys. This represents like nail holes. This represents just kind of like a bigger hole. Everything that you guys see here, a big hole here. I just wanted to see, these are odds and ends that you would actually have at home. Okay, so I'm gonna put, take my two fingers and I'm gonna show you how easy this is. You're gonna be shocked. I'm going to cover the hole just like this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw that down. Now, if I want to apply the mud, I hold my hand almost flat against the drywall. Okay, so if drywall's like this, if I want to apply the mud, I hold my hand almost flat. When I want to come back and take it off, I stand it up and I scrape it down. Does that make sense? So I'm going to show you that one more time, okay? So when I'm putting it on, I'm flat. Now, you can... That's a hot mess. You can't even see that. See? Next time, we'll definitely, definitely paint the drywall... Oh, I think you can see it now. There you go. You see that mud? Okay. Camera, don't go on it. All right, so you can see that mud. Now, I can't leave. There's a, you, I mean, even though you can't see it, I can't leave this heaviness here. Because the truth of the matter is, I don't want to sand that. That doesn't make any sense. So what do I want to do? I want to take it all the way off. So now I'm going to take my two fingers back like that, and I'm just going to pull all of that off. Because the only thing that I want to have left is what's actually on that little hole. You see that? So if I'm doing another one, see how we have this one? Here, so we have this one. So we're going to come and we're going to put it there like that. 
Okay, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to take all of it off. Okay, because the only thing I want to have left is just enough to cover the hole. The number one mistake that people make when they're repairing any hole is that they, they shove a ton of mud on it and then they leave all that mud there to dry. Here's the thing. Every hole is going to require you're going to do two passes. So even with what I've done here, even with what I've done here, when this dries, even though you can see this full box, even though you can see this full box, only the hole right here needs drywall, right? This doesn't need drywall. So I don't want to keep that there. It doesn't make any sense. So let's say that this is dry. What's going to happen is it's going to shrink slightly. And then I am going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to come back with my mud. I'm going to come back over it. I'm going to hold this down. And then I'm going to take 100% off. And I'm, the notion is that the mud is only going to stay inside the hole where it belongs. Does that make sense? Only inside the hole. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I am not going to do a whole lot more today other than this hole, and I'm going to tell you why. Because we just can't see the drywall. Between the lighting and the color, and I think the lack of light, um, it's, it's impossible for you guys to see this the way that I would need you to see it. So I, I will reschedule my drywall 101. I'll get my, my lighting, my setup, I'll get it all taken care of. Hayden and I will work all the details again, and we'll, we'll try again. But I can tell you a couple of things in the process. Here's what I can tell you. Um, for those of you who have towel bars and the towel bars have come loose, this is why it's come loose. It's, it's come loose because at some point your anchor has adjusted out of the wall. Okay. All of the stores, they sell these kind of like mini tool kits, if you will. The, they're, all of your towel bars have these mini screws underneath so if you just kind of look underneath you'll see these screws generally speaking unfortunately they're not universal some require a flat head some require a star head but you can buy little sets like this and I know I have you know quite a few missing but here's a little set and it's some sometimes they're called like um, mini tool sets sometimes they're called hobby tool sets but believe it or not these mini flathead or star or these mini Phillips are the type of screw heads that you're going to need in order to remove those towel bars. Once you have loosened those towel bars and you've taken these anchors off, or you've taken the bar, the bar off and the side bars off, what you're going to end up with is a round plate. And inside those round plates, you're gonna have a screw and inevitably you're going to have an anchor and you're going to notice that the reason that your towel bar keeps moving is because your anchor um, has been pulled on and it has stripped the wall and so what has happened is what was once what was once a hole let's see let's see if I can move right here what was once a hole that fit your anchor perfectly okay has now gotten too big okay so it's almost like this see this anchor I don't know if you can see it's almost like this anchor would be just kind of moving around here in this hole all right if that happens here's what all you need to do this is super easy you just need to go to the store and you want to replace this anchor with one that's identical but that's bigger so now you want to take this one out or a small anchor out and you just want to replace it with a kind of the same quality anchor but you just want to replace it with the bigger one and this one will now hold your screw in place and now you'll be able to put your towel bar back and it'll hold it with no problem so what will happen is this may be too this hole may be too big for this one but it'll be perfect for an, a, an anchor that's slightly bigger and the hole will be um, 
Now this drywall anchor, because it's a little bigger, it can bite back into the drywall and kind of give it some grip. Also, just in general, these bigger um, anchors are more powerful. I want you to remember this when you're going out to the store to buy anchors though. They actually go by weight. So if you think that your kids are like 20 pounds, um, and they, you know, gonna pull on that towel bar, pull on the towel bar, then just get an anchor that's for like a 25 or a 50 pound weight. Um, and then this way you know that whatever you've anchored is going to be solid. Here's the last thing I'm gonna tell you, and that's about this hole. For those of you who have kids who have um, ripped open the door so fast that the door has put a hole into the wall, because maybe there wasn't a door stop underneath one of those rubber door stops, you can purchase one of these, okay? These are called, they're called a uh, fiber tape and they're self-adhesive wall repairs and they're fantastic. Here's what, here's what comes in it. So it's a little package that looks like this, all right? And so there's a mesh on the back here. And so all it leaves you is a wire, a reinforced wire and then it's a kind of a sticky mesh, all right? You see how red my nose is? It's cold in the garage. All right, and so let's go back to our hole. So you can take one of these, and because it's sticky, you want to make sure, just like everything else, you wanna make sure that there is no part of your hole that's elevated, there's no part of the paper that's elevated, none. If there is, you just wanna, you wanna smooth it, or you wanna take, remember we talked about this, you wanna take this back and make sure that everything is nice and smooth. And you also need to make sure that your wall is clean, okay? So then you'll take one of these and you'll, now, this works beautifully behind doors. Let me tell you where it doesn't work beautifully. It doesn't work beautifully in areas where you intend on putting a new screw. This is not the answer for that. So if you're trying to hang a picture in this area, don't get one of these. You're going to have to, um, you'll have to instead reinforce this hole from the back. The other package that I gave you has an answer on how to do that. This is really, really perfect for somewhere you don't intend on hanging anything, if that makes any sense. Okay, now, so we kind of have these elevated edges. How do I fix that? We're gonna go back to our mud that we had earlier. Okay, so remember we talked about less is more on this, right? We're gonna put our fingers in. Right now, all I want to do, do you see what I'm doing? All I want to do is get the mud on. I am not trying to get the mud to be beautiful. I'm not trying to get the mud to be perfect. I just wanna get that mud on. I don't want any extra mud more than I have to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to slide them to the side. I'm going to show you why. Because as I come down here, I want all of the mud here to come off, but all the mud in the middle to stay. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pull that. And in the middle, I'm just going to come very smooth, keep both of my fingers in the middle. I really am not trying to take off any mud. I mostly want to smooth it. And on this side, I'm going to take my two fingers and I'm going to put it here because I want to remove all the excess mud here, but I want to leave the bulk of the mud in the middle. Here we go. So I'm going to do that. Okay. And then I'm going to come back one more time because I don't want that line to be there. And I'm just going to smooth that out. So I can kind of see a line there a little bit, which is okay. Now... That's a good first step. Now I'm gonna call that a first step. I'm gonna tell you why. I want, want to see if you guys can see that. And again, I am gonna do another one of these. What happens is now you can't see that hole. This is gonna dry. All of these are gonna dry. And when this dries, all you'll do is you'll reapply just like that. You will not sand in between coats. Whenever you have a patch that's like this, it requires three coats. So you'll put a little bit in the middle, you'll smooth out your ends, just like I did. You'll come back and do it a second time, you'll come back and do it a third time. The third time and the third time only, you're gonna take that sanding block we talked about, and in circular motions, you're gonna go around and you're gonna sand that. Okay, you're just gonna kind of, you're gonna sand those edges. You'll come in the middle, tiny bit, and then you'll come back, okay? And that's it, and you'll be able to see Hey, I fixed that hole. 
And I was able to create a bridge between the drywall that existed and the new mud that I had. And I was able to create this slight elevation. So I apologize that today was so rough. Man, there's so much to learn about these videos. I promise that at some point next week, I am going to do a part two of this and it's gonna be much better. I think what we'll do is we'll stand back a little bit and we will have a standing piece of drywall. I'll make sure the holes and the scratches are all bigger and I will have the wall already painted so that you guys can see. And then when we kind of go over, the, we'll go over the patches, we'll go over the tools again, hang, hang in there with me. Today was a rough day, I refuse to be discouraged. And, um, and then if you guys have drywall questions or maybe if you have drywall issues or like scratches or things like that at home that you want to have uh, fixed, then maybe send me some pictures or text them to me or whatever or put them on the Facebook page and then I can make a mock of those things um, on a, on a, in real time and again kind of work on those walls. So, all right, that's it for today. Um, oh, let me bring my, let me bring my, all right. Um, oh, you guys are so good for watching with me. Oh, Eddie, I'm doing great. So listen, I, like I said, I refuse to, do, I refuse to be discouraged. It, it took me about four hours to even just try to figure out the camera. Literally, Hayden and I had decided all day what the camera was set up was going to be. And then at six o'clock today, he said, Mom, I don't know. I think the camera should be somewhere else. And, and so I think it's kind of thrown me off, but no worries. Like I said, we're going to do a part two next week. I will make sure that I have the, um, the drywall painted so you guys can see the holes. In the meantime, send me examples of things that you guys want me to repair, and I'll do that. And then depending on the weather tomorrow, we'll determine whether we're back in the house cooking or we may be here tomorrow maybe introducing some tools. So I love you guys. You guys are so good to me. Thank you for allowing me to make mistakes on this brand new journey of At Home with Norma day four and um we'll go from there okay i love you guys remember that jesus loves you and um and i love you and be encouraged in this journey because god is so good and he's so faithful and i really do believe um that we're past the worst of it and i believe that our prayers are still powerful and i believe that god is still good and i believe that we serve the best of the i love you dd girl you know you are my heart man if there was ever somebody who had my heart as you cynthia hey hon um so okay remember earlier how i said share the video don't share this one um <laughs> and that's okay don't share this one we're gonna start again back here tomorrow at 6 30. as a matter of fact we will be in the garage we'll introduce some tools We'll start afresh, and, and we'll be doing fine, all right? All right, guys, I love you. Mwah, 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 mwah. Have a great night, and I'll see you at 6.30 tomorrow.